Hello and welcome to Clash of Lords 2 Battle Royale Strategy Episode 5. Today we're going to be going over Cloister of Terrors and I'm going to show you how to beat up on Chiron. So the first thing I want to go over today is my configuration, my lineup, uh, and you'll note if you've watched my recent Battle Royale Strategy videos that my aids have changed quite a bit here. Uh, over the last few days I dumped a lot of resources into bringing up two Shining Wizards, which I'll go over in a minute. Uh, worked on a second Demon Slayer aid, which I believe I've covered before, but I'll touch briefly briefly on, uh, as well as a Blitz Bomber that I had been had sitting for a while and just hadn't put anything into him yet. Um, you'll also notice that I've removed some of my defensive aids that I had on my heroes. Uh, I had some Enchantresses and extra Berserkers down there to keep my heroes alive. I found that I'm I'm doing a pretty good job of tanking and making sure only uh, Berserkers taking damage, or he's the primary one taking damage during these fights. So I didn't feel like I needed the defensive heroes anymore, especially since they're hurting my overall damage output, given that the vast majority of the damage you do in Battle Royale comes from your mercenaries, not your heroes. Uh, secondly, uh, something that I haven't touched on before, but it's very important to pay, t pay attention to your weapons. You want to run weapons that have a buff to mercenary attack, uh, and you likely, in, in most stages, uh, you don't want to run a sword. The early stages is okay because you can just overpower the heroes in those stages, but once you get to, you know, uh, Demon Horde, that, that kind of area later when the, when the hit points of the stage starts really drastically jumping, it's best not to use swords from that point forward because uh, ideally you want to be pulling one hero at a time and focusing all your damage into that hero as much as possible. So I'm going to go over uh, some of the other aids that I've picked up down here really quick. I'm going to show you a shine the Shining Wizard because it's a little bit confusing. And one of the reasons I didn't use it for a long time is I was confused about this myself, and I guess it makes sense now because, well, it just makes sense, but... So here's the aid skill. <clears throat> You'll notice there's only five levels. You only have to get the primary skill up to level 12 in order to max the aid skill, so it makes Shining Wizards uh, pretty easy investments as far as mercenary aids go. And you'll see it adds five sorcerer, sorcerer mercenaries for your deployed hero. Uh, initially, I thought that meant something other than wizards, uh, so it wouldn't apply to wizards, but in fact that does mean wizards. So if you put this on an Ambrosia, you put this on a Skull Mage, they're going to get five additional mercenaries, and that's huge in Battle Royale. So I picked up a couple of those. You can see we've talked about Demon Slayer before, but where's the... there we go. You can see, so his aid skill, again, uh, supplies additional mercenaries. As I said, mercenaries are the, the bulk of your damage in Battle Royale. It's really important that you spend souls to improve your mercenaries, you take the bonus skills that your mercenaries get, and then you have aids that can buff the damage uh, and survivability of your mercenaries. So Demon Slayer is a great aid there. We also uh, worked on a Blitz Bomber here a little bit. And you'll see he just gives a flat base attack buff to any mercenary for which the, the hero he's applied to has. Uh, so I've got this, I think I saw my Ambrosia, so all of her wizards are going to get uh, currently 45% more at base attack. So those are some of the changes that I've made. And that's definitely helped to improve my score quite a bit. So I guess uh, from here I'll go ahead and take you into the attacks and I'm going to give you a brief description ahead of time now. Uh, and tell you what's gonna what's gonna happen here. So basically, the idea in this stage is uh, you've got heroes in four corners with great sage in the middle, and you can attack one hero at a time if you're careful. Don't use swords. Don't use uh, mass base area of attack effects. Uh, so you generally want to start out by killing Carol De Bell in this stage because she's the easiest, uh, and you don't need to really skill lock her. You can just run straight up damage guys and a berserker and just beat her face in. Uh, Arctic Lord is a little bit tougher. Uh, it's best if you can skill lock him because his skill will kill your mercenaries quite often, but he's generally killed second. Then you do Chiron next. Uh, then you want to pull Great Sage down to the bottom corner down there or off to the right hand side. Uh, and from that point, you've got Sapphirix last. Uh, so this stage, this stage, I was taking care of Chiron or putting a couple hits on him. Uh, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be dropping my Berserker by Chiron, I'm going to let him get a little bit of aggro, and then I'm going to drop my other heroes behind him, excepting Great Sage, who gets dropped in the Arctic Lord corner. And this is one of the reasons that you kill Arctic Lord before you attack Chiron, because if you put your Great Sage over there when Arctic Lord is still alive, Arctic Lord's skill is going to make him come all the way over to where you are by Chiron and kill your mercenaries, and it's probably going to kill your Great Sage. And the important thing to note here is how I use my Great Sage to keep Chiron skill locked the entire fight so he never gets to 
uh, Kratos clones, which is a massive loss of damage because you end up targeting a bunch of clones rather than targeting Chiron. And you, if you if you ever see that happen, you'll watch your score just drops down to nothing. It's it's not moving at all. Uh, so it's really important to kill Arctic Lord first. So uh, try to keep this short. Sorry for the length, but uh, stay tuned after the jump, and I will walk you through the hit. We are going to, as I said previously, we're going to drop Berserker on the left-hand side over here by the Chiron. We're going to use his Divine immediately, which usually triggers him, or triggers Chiron and pulls him over. Uh, so he'll start attacking you. No, I didn't get him that time, but it took a second or so longer. So I'm going to drop my other three damage dealers behind him, and then I'm going to drop my Great Sage over in the Arctic Lord corner. Uh, you don't have to use Great Sage's skill right away. You can get five or six seconds before Chiron will use his uh, skill. Sometimes you can hit him with Berserker first and buy yourself a few seconds from that before you use it. Uh, it really just comes down to what you prefer to do and how you prefer to time it. But, so you'll see I use the skill first, uh, and then I use my Skull Mage skill and I drop an Allied Winds. Uh, you don't want to use the, the Skull Mage Divine yet, because if you do, there, then you could end up in a situation where Rene Venn's Divine brings that back instead of uh, Great Sages. So you'll see with about 8 seconds left on Sage's skill, I use his Divine, which uh, will lock up all the heroes, including Chiron, until such a time as I can use Great Sage's skill again immediately, which keeps Chiron locked. Once uh, Great Sage has completed his Divine, don't use it during, wait till he's completed his Divine, then use Rene Ven's Divine, which will give you back the Divine from Great Sage. If you use it while Great Sage is still in the process of his Divine, sometimes it gets buggy and you don't actually get Great Sage's Divine back. And that's a huge problem. Uh, th this is the only method I know of to keep Chiron locked the entire fight. Uh, any other order of use of those skills will stop that from happening. So once you've gotten Great Sage's Divine back, it's going to be just like the first rotation. You're going to keep using your Skull Mage. Uh, at that point, it's fine to use the Skull Mage Divine. Keep hitting Berserker skill to get the damage buff. Use your Allied Winds. Uh, after the Divine of Great Sage is up and he's used his skill, you'll use Rene Ven's Divine to get Great Sage Divine back. And then when there's about 8 seconds left on Great Sage's uh, skill timer, you'll use his Divine again, which will lock Chiron up for 10 seconds and allow you to immediately use Great Sage's skill uh, once it becomes available and keep Chiron locked up again. And you'll see that he's, during this entire fight, he's yet to be able to use his skill even once. Uh, and we're getting really close to the end now, so from here it's just finish it out, you know, make sure you're tossing Ambrosia skill down to get your damage buff for your heroes, uh, and do everything you can to pump out the damage. So I hope that helps everybody. If you've got questions, please leave me comments below. Uh, subscribes and likes are always appreciated. And check back because I've got another Battle Royale video going up tonight, uh, as well as possibly some Guild Clash videos and some other things I've been working on this weekend. Thanks for watching.